I feel like it takes a lot of grit for us from women to juggle it. I do. And if you're, you're going to be giving up on things. Some people think I'm going to become a business owner because I want to, because I want a better life. What's better? Like, what are you choosing? Hi, I'm Alex Fluxer. And I'm Rivki Silver. And this is Deep Meaningful Conversations, powered by Meaningful Minute. The podcast where we explore the complexities, nuances, and joys of being a firm woman. Hey, everyone. Uh, Thanks for joining us for another episode of Deep Meaningful Conversations. Today on the podcast, we are talking about from female entrepreneurship. Browse through Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook, and you will see just all these incredible women who are running businesses of all types, and they're servicing the Orthodox community and beyond, and it, it's really amazing to yes. me. Yes, I'm, I'm totally inspired by these ladies. And um, I just sort of sit back and admire them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Rifki, when we were coming up with the idea for this episode, we were laughing because neither of us have any experiences in running a business. Right. We are not entrepreneurs. No. Um, we do not consider ourselves savvy in that way. It's just not one of the tools that Hashem blessed us with. Right. <laughs> um, so it's like, oh, but we're doing an episode on From Women entrepreneurs, you know, while we can't speak from experience, we can admire what these women are doing. Um, And I really like to look at someone who's running a successful company and it just boggles my mind. And I'm always so curious, like, how did you do that? How did you start that? Right. And, you know, it's funny that you say that because I feel like I'm sure people have asked you, like, how do you write? How do you do that? How do you create in the way that you do? Like, how do you make a podcast? I wouldn't even know where to start. Right. You know, like, like, how do you write an article? Like, how how does that happen? Where does it come from? (laughs) Exactly. So I feel like we all have the things in our life that we're like, we don't understand. Yes, yes. And (laughs) we all we all definitely have our different jams. And it's important to acknowledge that. Um, (laughs) The thing is, though, with entrepreneurship is you really need to be a risk taker. Mm -hmm. And that's a part for me where I am averse to taking risks to a certain extent. It's just harder for me. Um, I, I know I could grow in this area. I know I could work on myself. I know I have it in me, (laughs) but I just, it would be a big challenge for me to like start a business in multiple, multiple ways because of that personality. I hear that. I, I definitely hear that. Like the risk aversion, like yeah, I feel like I, I don't know. I feel like I've taken a lot of risks and a lot of different projects like over the years, but never in like the business sense. Mm. You know what I mean? That and, require loss of money. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's 100%. Usually it's just loss of time or right. like, you know, like, um, you know, personal cup right. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah. So, well, you know, we talked with Abby Wolin a couple um, episodes back when we had an Instagram live about creativity. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, it was Abby and it was Ruchi Koval. And um, I've just been thinking about her because that was actually quite a, I don't know, mind blown type of experience where she broke a lot of the stereotypes that I have about business women mm-hmm. and about like I, what I would consider like the traits and personalities that you need to have to be, you know, an entrepreneur. And she is a successful businesswoman. She runs a business, but then she's telling me she went to art school and she's also, and she's also an artist and she's a creative. So I always thought like you have a business mind, you know, it's a logic type of mind, you know, it's, I don't know, a lot of hustling, but I never really, I, then I thought of like artistic creatives as like a separate mind, but Abby had both of these. And I think the more you learn about people who run businesses, you see like they, they're they very diverse. They they have lots of aspects of their personality and lots of skills that make them successful. A hundred percent. And I feel like that's, yeah, exactly. We're here we are shattering stereotypes on deep, meaningful yeah. conversations, you know, but it's true. You think like, oh, I'm not the type or this the type, right, but like right, right. really, really what is the type like I was I, one of the things that I loved about Abby's um, story that she shared with us a bit on the live and that you can check out on her you know Instagram account and everything is the fact that she she pivoted mm-hmm. you know she was she was being artistic and she was doing this this business then she was turning it into this and that and the other and she had to pivot and I thought that that, that to me was like that is a component of success is the ability to be flexible and to pivot and yeah. I feel that's something that actually comes up in our interview with Kyla mm-hmm. um, shortly so yeah yeah so um (laughs) on this episode we're really here to learn more about what it takes to be an entrepreneur and what 
that journey looks like because it's not a finished product. I mean, we may see the finished product, but for them, as you'll see, it's still a journey and they're mm-hmm. still on that journey as mm-hmm. well. And they came, you know, a long journey to get to where they are today. So our guest today is Chayla Kaufman. Chayla is the CEO of the Jewish Content Network. Um, she really, her company provides advertising to the Jewish world and they offer digital print and social ads across a dozen, um, dozens of different different platform publishers and she's going to explain exactly more in detail in case you're like totally lost what it is that she does and it's really interesting yeah and we were we were, it was very interesting and we were very curious also how how did Kyla get started what risk did she take and how she's achieved success and her perspective on entrepreneurship for from women so if you are thinking about starting a business or if you own your own business or if you're just fascinated like we are by this rising trend of from female entrepreneurship then this episode is for you. Yep. So before we get to Kyla, it is time for a montage on DMC. We asked a few from female entrepreneurs, what's their biggest joy and biggest challenge being an entrepreneur? And this is what they said. Hello, my name is Adina Burston, otherwise known as Adina B. And I have a salon here in Baltimore. And as I sit in this car, I think about the question is how is, what are my biggest challenges as an entrepreneur and what are my biggest joys? And I think it's just really reality that this is the time that I have is in my car a few minutes by myself before I walk in to my busy, busy day after I drop the kids off at school. That's that's the reality of being an entrepreneur. And there's a lot of joy that comes along with it. The joy is that I get to do the carpools. The joy is that I get to go to the hot lunches and the field trips and stuff for the kids. And then I get to build my business the way I want to build my business. And I get to serve my clients the way I want to serve them. And it's an awesome, awesome situation to be in. The hard parts about it is obviously always having to be work. When you when you own your own business, at the end of the day, you are on on all the time. You got to be answering those phone calls. You got to return those texts. If you want to keep a good business and you want to keep people happy, which is what we do, it's customer service. So you're always on. So that's the hard part. It's a hard balance because you want to be present when you're not at work. You want to be present when you are at work. Um, so those, I feel like, are the biggest challenges of owning your own business. Hey, my name is Rifki Itzkowitz. I am the owner and designer at Impact Fashion, a line of CS clothes available in sizes 2 through 24. And my greatest joy as an entrepreneur is really the ability to execute unique ideas without having to worry about a boss. <laughs> you know, the ability to just think of something and put it out into the world is really, really special. I think that when you're in a field, especially like mine, like from fashion, that has a ton of work to do around size inclusivity and body positivity, being able to like have an idea and not worry about running it by a committee of, oh, is this something that women would want to wear is really nice. (laughs) You know, to just be able to jump into it is really nice. And my greatest challenge is tied into that, honestly. And that is that sometimes we'll have so many ideas or we'll see, not even ideas, but we'll see so many different areas where we think that we can be helpful, you know, where we can be of service and we don't know where to pick, (laughs) you know, you don't know where to go. And a trap that I've fallen into a little bit is moving, you know, an inch in every direction, which is just the same as staying put where you are as opposed to picking something and and going for it. So really honing in my focus on um, one particular thing, following that through to completion, that's a challenge for me. But the joy is really in find seeing a need and having the ability to fill it really succinctly, like really um, to just really answer what is what is needed in that space. Without further ado, here's our DMC with Chayla Kaufman. Welcome, Chayla, to Deep Meaningful Conversations. We are so happy to have you on the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Amazing. Okay, so Rifki and I are really fascinated by from female entrepreneurs, and that is that is what you are and who you are. You are the CEO and founder of the Jewish Content Network, of course. Um, please first tell us, you know, how you started this business, how you decided to start it, and I'm also curious, like, if you had background, you know, in the field, and finally, you know, the risks you took as an entrepreneur to start this business. Okay, sure. So if there are people that may have heard my story before, I'll try to keep it a little bit abbreviated. Um, so I started as a secretary working at the Aten Neman. I was um, just regular secretarial work, working with Rabbi Lipschitz, who's the editor and owner of the Aten. Um, started loving what I was doing, asked for a raise. How can I be more impactful here and make more money? And they said, start selling ads. 
So that's what I did. I was a young girl, 19 years old, straight out of seminary. She was my high school teacher. So she knew me and recruited me um, after seminary. And um, that's it. I used to come home from work, lock myself in a room four or five hours at a time, wow. start selling ads. And I was extremely motivated, aggressive, determined that I wanted to, you know, prove my worth, um, bring in a higher salary. I was making $18,000 a year there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I loved what I did. And that's why I was like, I want to stay here, but I, this is ridiculous. Like my wardrobe was costing more than that, you know, <laughs> so, so that's really where it all started. I started learning um, how to communicate better with people, how to listen to their needs, um, figure out a better, like, like if an ad wasn't successful, why, you know, always make sure the client felt like they had a rep and someone who really cared about them. And then therefore they'd always come back. Like it was okay, but let's do something better. And they knew they could count on me to like come up with a better angle, a better idea. So I was getting involved in also their creative process, which wasn't part of my job, but I felt like if I wanted the ads to come in, I had to make sure the ads were going to be successfully performing. So that's really where I started um, in the print industry. Hmm. So um, there for many years. And then I started realizing that like the world is the non-Jewish world was this goes back already. This is 18 years ago. Um, hmm. The non-Jewish world was moving towards digital. And I felt like I want to get into it. Um, started um, working with matzov.com, which was my husband's friend and yeah, really built that really yeah. built that up with them. Um, with one guy, literally it was a one man show and, and me and him. And that's where I started getting into the online world and the news industry. And that's when I bumped into my partner, my partner now, Chaim Chernoff. He was doing what I was doing for Yeshiva World. I was doing for Matzav. Um, instead of knocking heads together, we decided we're going to become a unit and really figure out like how we can take the from world like onto the digital you know, platforms and like be successful with it. Oh, I love that. I love that, yeah. that, that you're just like, let's just join forces. Yeah. We met That's a few smart. times. Like, you know, we were first thinking, should we share clients? How are we going to do this? And we're like, let's become the place that if anybody needs to advertise online, they just call us. Like hmm. we can help. We'll start sourcing different Instagram influencers. We'll, we'll, uh, Instagram was slowly also coming up. Like it was brand new then. Um, so we really got in on, on, on a lot of like beginnings, which hmm. is probably how we were able to be you know, Baruch Hashem, as well known and successful as we are today, because we came in like right when it started. So it didn't really leave, leave so much room to, for someone else, even if someone else today would try to come in and get the market share, there's a certain, you know, do not, like we dominate a little bit only because we were there from the beginning, not because we're so amazing. Um, well, I'm sure you're also so amazing, but you're the pioneers, it sounds like. You're the this. pioneers. Yeah, right. exactly. So we're mm-hmm. lucky, blessed Baruch Hashem, really, because we came in at the right time and we built it. Um, quickly, but slowly. Um, we were both very determined. I am more like a business plan kind of determination. Me more of like, I'm going to just kill these sales. I'm going to keep recruiting and bringing in. So between both of our personalities, we really worked beautifully together. We still do Baruch Hashem. And, um, we have an amazing team today, but that's really like, I started in print. I started looking where the world was going, wanting to get into it. Um, as far as risks though, I'm lucky because I don't think I gave like starting this business wasn't risky. Hmm. Um, the biggest risk I can say I did take was when I was, was really trusting, trusting my ability that I can leave something very stable at the at head mm-hmm. um, to really like, you know, build something on my own. Um, it, it definitely took a lot of confidence and courage to do something like that, to say like, I'm going to leave, right. The stability. Um, but I believed, I really believe that if what I was doing there was successful, why would it be any different here? Like, as long as I'm making sure I'm treating people well and delivering what they need, um, and, you know, helping them be more successful, really what difference, you know what I mean? Why, why, like, don't doubt yourself. You know, I felt like I can do this. So definitely, um, I mean, you're charting new waters. So, I mean, that is like, I could imagine just getting on the boat and going into new seas is very, that could be overwhelming. That can be scary, but it sounds like because you have this confidence from, you know, the, the work that you've done and from the person you have become as a professional, you felt like you could do this. Right. For sure. 
But I think also at that point, like it was so new. So there was no rule book yet. It was almost mm. like, it wasn't like, oh, she's doing it wrong. There was no one else doing it. You know, wow. we really were able to like create the rules of the game and, and we were lucky we came in. We, we really were, we had a lot of Seattle to Shmaya because we really did come in at the beginning of the market, you know? So, Interesting. so if, interestingly, my, my father was an, um, an art director in advertising for decades and, you know, mm-hmm. Manhattan, you know, and all those ad agencies, Ogilvy and Mather and all that. So I'm familiar with the industry, but this was before the digital revolution. So I remember my father working from his home office, you know, with all of his pens and all of his markers and drawing the ads up and designing them. But then when things transferred, this was probably right, like late nineties, you know, transferred into the digital world. That was really hard for him because he was already, you know, old school doing this for decades with, with, with markers. And and for him, it wasn't an easy transition, but you know, you're young, you had totally different level of experience, like ready to tackle all this. Also, this I feel world. like I was excited to do this, that people just trusted me. It was like, I, I already established like that reputation of being someone who really like gets it done and you yeah. can trust her. So I feel like I was able to slowly lure in the industry into this place because it was like, she'll give you the time. She knows what she's doing. Just trust her, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I'm, I'm lucky, but I do believe that it's, you know, it was also, I, I worked hard to make sure that I'm treating people well. And I think that's really something that if you're going to take that risk and try something new, make sure like, like the most important thing is to make sure that you're treating people properly and they feel like they can actually, you know, trust you with their money, their hard work, whatever they're hmm they're doing so exactly I mean it's like you know like Kesser Shane Tove you know like you you developed a yeah. good name for yourself and a reliability and consistency and that's right. you know, like they say like they say like on social media like you know what's more the content is the most important like what like it's not like the reputation or whatever but like what are you actually bringing to people like what is right. that right. um and that has to be valuable and it sounds like you exactly with the relationship piece and with the getting it done that's, that's, that's a big thing. That's a big deal. And people, and then word, word of mouth spreads like Kyla is someone who can get it done and she'll treat you well. That's invaluable. Really. I'm hearing a lot of different pieces, you know, from like the relationships and to the hustling for ads and the business plan and like the giving advice on what actually constitutes a successful ads, like maybe consulting even a little bit. So forgive me, this is like an obvious question. I'm good at obvious questions. No, well, we all want to know. <laughs> I, you know. So like what, <laughs> what, um, what does your company do exactly? And part two of the question is what do you find uh, most fulfilling about your work? Okay. So besides for the, just selling people what they need, right. In order to get the word out, right. Like let's say someone comes to us, they need to advertise. What do they do? Where do they go? So we actually come up with that budget and that plan and the strategy for them, where we're advertising, how frequently, what places, um, what the budget should look like, how much it's going to cost going into a maintenance plan, like things like that. That's just like the basics of Jewish content network. Um, I also run a company called Consult Right Media. I don't know if you know, um, where we have hundreds of clients and we create the material actually needed for these plans. So you have a plan. I need to do banner ads. I need to do print ads. I need to do online articles. Who's creating it? So I have a team of designers, writers, um, and of course, amazing clients. And we develop, um, we develop the campaigns. So that wow. they can be promoted. Um, and what's great. so fulfilling about my job is that it's fulfilling and it's almost like scary sometimes. We're always on the hot seat because besides for the businesses that we do, which is a whole different part of the business, and I I, I love seeing other people's business successful. So I I love that part, but I also love the fact that any any Jew, it's like whatever's like hot in the Jewish world, that's what we have to be busy with. Like Ukraine, right? All of a sudden, like we dropped, I mean, we had so many different nice, wonderful projects that we were working on and all of a sudden Ukraine and like, that's, that's all the company was busy with and everyone needs to raise money and everyone needs, you know, to make sure that everything's getting done properly. All of a sudden the whole team is busy, busy, busy on 20 different Ukraine projects. Wow. Um, So we're not the ones always creating material for all these campaigns. There are certain clients that we do and certain clients that come to us with material that's ready, but what's fulfilling is like, we're actually facilitating so much good change, fundraising, success. I mean, it's an amazing thing to be part of. And like, it's so unpredictable. It's like, we don't know what's coming next, but that unpredictable, like I enjoy that. I enjoy the 
continuity of things. I enjoy um, being part of, of huge projects in Cloudy. Mm-hmm. So I love it. Absolutely. You're probably never bored. Oh, uh, how many hours do you put into your work day? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I know too many. Don't ask me that question. I'm not, I'm not a good example. No, no. <laughs> wow. So it's, so you have a creative bend as well, not just like the business mind. It sounds like you're involved in the actual design of ads too. Yeah, sure. I think I'm actually better at creativity than business. Hmm. Um, I think like, I don't think so much behind like every business transaction. I'm more like into like the bigger picture than the detail of, of like business planning. You know, I leave that to either people that I hire to do that, you know? So when you were younger, I'm just so curious, as you start off as a secretary, like, did you have goals that, wow, one day when I grow up, I want to be X, Y, Z, because I have the, these talents. I'm creative. I'm no, how did that, how did that work? Oh. I, I always did like like the extracurriculars on the side. Um, I was a hard worker, even as like a young girl, like I would always be that girl that people call to babysit. I loved, you know, like to me, it wasn't below me. Like today I can't get a babysitter for my life. It's like yeah, <laughs> $20 an hour, just come babysit. We, we feel that struggle. Uh, like, <laughs> it's like a different world, right? I me, mean, I was the girl, like everyone in the neighborhood used to call me to babysit. Um, in the summers, I usually went to camp, let's say one half, the other half I worked. I had no problem working. I wasn't like the kind of girl that, first of all, I always needed to be busy. That definitely is a little bit ADHD, you know, personality. Um, So I ran like in the summer after seminary, I came back and was a head counselor in a camp for two months. Um, Other summers, I always worked in camps, part of the production. I was always part of production. Yes. (laughs) But not like, I never said like, oh, I want to be this when I grow up. No, never. Mm -hmm. Where where did you grow up? Can I ask? Muncie. Very nice. Yeah. Wow. 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 Okay. Um, so, you know, we've talked also to parents yeah. though, are more into that. Like they bring out, like they try to like, it almost like makes them feel better to know, like my child wants to be something when they grow up, mm. but it's really not like, uh, even I'm guilty of it. You know, my oldest son who like, I, I try to like feel out for him. Like, what do you, what do you think you want to do when you grow up? You know, mm-hmm. it's almost like I want to make sure that they have something in their heart that they want to do, but really yeah. they don't need it let them experience life the way we all experienced it did you know exactly what you wanted to be no. when you grew up? but I'm yeah. curious it sounds like you skipped the college track is that true oh, totally I had, right I, had I mean zero. that's what's so fascinating about this really yeah like you didn't bother going to college. you like you started off right. in a small menial entry level job no offense to being a secretary but it was an entry level job without right. an education and you built yourself up from there based right. on experience and grit right determination really <laughs> Well, I find this very inspiring on a parental level because it's like, then I can stop panicking about like, oh, is my kid like in the right exactly. extracurricular? <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Uh, and also, go further. what's that? Sometimes they go further, like without that, you know, the scholastic pressure. Uh, okay. So for my 18 year old, I can tell him I had an interview with Hyla Coffin and no, you don't need to go to college. <laughs> Okay. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So oh, talking about risks, actually, um, you know, we discussed in the beginning how the whole field is, is fraught with risks. Of course, entrepreneurship is a risky business. I find it's actually sort of glorified in the firm world, you know, with our magazines, uh, we, sh- we focus on the success stories, but we know, if, I'm sure you can give us the statistics of how many startups fail. Um, so considering this, I'm curious, Kyla, what your thoughts are about starting a business as a way for from women to make a Parnassa. Do I give my recommendation? Like, do I give my, yeah. <laughs> like, is it, is, or is, would you say, you know what? Like it's, it's too risky. It's not, you know, what, what would your, if some young, young woman came up to you and asked you, you have to be so ready. I feel like it takes a lot of grit for us from women to juggle it. I do. And if you're, you're going to be giving up on things. Some people think I'm going to become a business owner because I want to, because I want a better life. What's better? Like, what are you choosing? You know, um, there are so many times, like I miss things or I'm not, I'm there physically, but mentally I'm not, you know, I'm sitting at a breakfast with my sisters and my mother. We try to get together. And like, sometimes I'm like pitching myself, like just focus on the moment. Like, it's so nice. We're all together. Like stop letting your mind wander into like everything that needs to happen. You know, there's a certain, like it over, it definitely overtakes us. Um, it, it, it overtakes us. I think that us women also, like we don't have the male ego. I think because of it, it's so much harder for us to like 
encourage ourselves like on a positive level. Like we can do this. We can do this. You know, men, when they go into business, it's like, of course I could do this. Mm. You know, I'm going to be amazing. <laughs> Us women, it's like be, besides for like, you know, all the challenge, like all the daily pieces that come in front of us, we also have to like knock down that negative um, self-talk yeah, much yeah. Yes. In, and like tell ourselves like, no, I could do this. Like, I'm going to do it. I, you know, I, I want this so badly. Like you really, really have to want it badly to hmm. be successful and get there. And, and sometimes you're giving up on, on other very important things, you know, mm-hmm. I do think yeah, it's I think like when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So if you're saying, yeah. absolutely. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And like what, you know, there's, there's going to be times it's an uncomfortable decision. Well, I'd imagine that you support a lot of other from women, right? Like I'd imagine women come to you and ask you for support and sure. advice. For sure. Um, yeah, there definitely is. It's, it's, it's a mindset, you know, there's determination. There's being okay with failing at other things when you're successful at something else. Um, so there definitely are risks like that. Also, you know, having a family on board, um, sometimes like, you know, kids or teenagers need that consist. It's not like they're on board and they're on board. They're on board today, but then tomorrow they're like right. freaking out at you, you know, you gotta get them <laughs> back on board. <laughs> so, you know, we're just juggling. I think, I feel like we're juggling. We're juggling a yeah. lot. Yeah. It makes sense. And it feels like it's, you know, like with any, with any job, with any Parnassa, with any choice that we make in life, there's going to be those struggles. And it's like, there's, I guess there's probably just specific struggles that are specific to being an entrepreneur that wouldn't be specific to something else, you know, like, trying to think of examples and I am drawing total blank, but that's fine. Well, I'd imagine like even financially, I mean, there's a point where you need to be investing in your business and you're not necessarily seeing anything in return because you're, you know, waiting, you're looking at the bigger picture here and that, that might be a difficult, you know, part a decision for someone. Are they willing to do that? Are they able to do that? Right. Right. I see a bigger struggle with women that are the sole breadwinners like that also tremendous struggle, the pressure of right financially having to like keep the business going and then taking care of providing for a family. Mm-hmm. I don't know other people in the world who can even relate to what a from woman has to. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. That's not an understatement. Um, so I guess as we're thinking about like women who do delve into starting their own businesses for whatever, for whatever the motivations, whether they want more flexibility to their schedule, they want, you know, to be able to curate the environments so that they don't have to go into an environment that they would rather not be in, you know, as far as like, I think that might also be a motivation for some women, but what are some, um, that'd be a motivation for me, <laughs> full disclosure, <laughs> the, um, what are some typical mistakes that you see from entrepreneurs, female or not, just like some, um, make as they start to like think of and create and embark on their own business? Like what are the most common mistakes? If they that I think see, I do see people like trying to grow too fast and hiring too quickly. Something mm-hmm. that like I did in, in our company when we started was I did everything. Like I had to figure out how to just do everything. Like we mm-hmm. weren't taking on hires. It was a matter of either, you know, either like there's no money in the company and I can hire, right. Or we can actually cover, you know, cover our salaries, um, and just get down and dirty and do what needs to be done. I feel like today also maybe, maybe it was easier than like people weren't as like scared of what everyone else is going to say about them, but mm. it's almost like I start a business. I have to be successful. Like, hmm. we ha- like there's no, it, it takes time. Like you're not going to be an overnight success overnight. You know, like we say the overnight success comes after 10 years of working towards right. something. But it really is true. Like people, it, it's an amazing thing to see. Like who's known today it took them years and years and years and years and years to get there. And it looks mm-hmm. like it's like easy and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to go into open a business, you know, what, whatever. I, I never let like something be below me and still not, hmm. you know, so it's it's such on, an important message, such an important message. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, you know, realizing that like, you don't need to hire everyone to do everything for you. It takes time. Like hiring has to be something that's really, really carefully um, thought out. It's also scary. Like you're taking on somebody's sale, like you're, you know, it's their part say you don't just fire. You don't, when you're taking on a new, a new hire, it has to be a very, very, um, it's an important decision to make. And, you know, every hire is another important decision. It's not like, oh, let's just hire for this and hire for that. It sounds like, you know, so much more, you know, attractive to say I have 30 employees, but are you, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. 
Right. And then how happy are the employees and like, what, what's the, how well do they get along together? And like, you know, what's the personality? There's so, right. I, I, so many factors that go into a business and like, yeah. And know, it's okay if your business to grow slowly and it should grow slow, you know? So and I'd imagine there's advantage in the beginning. Like you said, you did everything. Well, then you really got a hands-on feel and understanding of the industry. So then when you hired other people, like you knew exactly what you were talking about, you had experience. Sure. sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was something that um, we changed the technology of the way we were uploading something in the company, um, like certain kind of de- like information, let's say a live stream to go up on the website. Someone has like a, a live event, right? So there's coding and then boom, it goes on all the websites. Anyhow, I used to literally, I used to do it by myself, go on the computer, go on the back end, go into the WordPress mm-hmm. site, upload everything myself, right? Until we built the technology that you can actually put the code on one place and snap the websites you want it to go on and boom, it goes live. Oh, nice. Anyhow, it's amazing. But when my, the C, when, when, when someone who, when he works for us, the, the guy who built the technology of the whole system, he made it easier. And he's like, Kyle, I'm not teaching you how to do it. And I'm like, why? He's like, because I know that you're going to still be the one to do it. You have people <laughs> working for you. Let I love them it. For you. But like, that's my personality. Like, oh, it's Matsu Shab, it's 10 o'clock. I don't want to bother one of my employees. Like something went down, something needs to be fixed. I'm just going to go turn on. I'll just do it myself. He's like, no, you are not learning how to do it. <laughs> no. I, I, like, I'm really, I'm this, I'm, this is like, this is me. Yeah, this, this is my is personality as well. So like, I'm really relating very strongly to everything you're saying. Right now. So, it, so it sounds like it's hard to delegate, but you have to like, how do you, fi- how did you do that? How did you manage? It is hard to delegate. And, and also I don't like to like be a burden onto my employees either. It's right. Like, right. I'm okay with doing it also. It's okay. Like I, I know it's 10 o'clock or dear shoe CM hashas. They had the dear shoe CM just yeah, yeah. two months of Shabbos ago. And it was midnight and they had to have live footage like on the Instagram accounts. Right. So they were sending it to me and I was publishing on all the Instagram accounts. And my husband's like, it's midnight. Like you <laughs> have such a big staff. What are you the one putting it on the Instagram accounts for? I'm like, because it's midnight. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I can't abuse my employees. Like I'll do it for the client. I'll do anything for the client. I still will, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I love, I, I love like hearing the behind the scenes, just like all the workings of your personality, you know, That's like great. what goes it's into. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. The, it's, it's okay. So we're going to wrap up and um, I'm sure there are many eager listeners here who <laughs> aren't like us. We're just, we're not entrepreneurs, but we're, we're no. we find it fascinating. We want to learn hustle. more about we it. Hustle. Oh yeah. 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 We have a way. podcast. One point though, I want to bring out and that I feel like would help women and like all over that are looking to like you know, either go into this or, or build a, build a business. And I feel like that trade is resilience and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a woman who has resilience to just bounce back will be successful. You know what I mean? We all have our bad days. We all have our bad clients. We all have our bad experiences. We all have a lot of negativity all over us. You know, we do, it's just the world is not necessarily the most positive place. If you can know that like right now it's negative, it's okay. I can feel this down mood We're women, we all have moods mm. and like tomorrow's <laughs> going to be better. I really feel like, or even if it's not tomorrow, it could take a week for that feeling to pass, you know, but the resilience to fight through negativity, to fight through rejection, to fight through down moments, all like that, I feel like to me is my, is the most important, like, you know, trait to really work on is to just be a resilient person um, and not let things like penetrate too deep and just Mm. be able to like turn the page, move forward, tomorrow is a new day, you know? Uh, oh, I like that. And that's in our, our third episode, episode three was yeah. actually on resilience. Yeah. So really? like, we'll just yeah. remind everyone to go back and listen to that. If you haven't listened to it, right. yeah, go listen to that. But <laughs> yeah, I think because you have a vision, right? Like you have a goal and you're not going to let this stop you from achieving what you want and what right. you're working Whatever. towards personal, like personal, exactly obstacles everywhere on a business level, mm-hmm. on a personal level. Um, yeah, you gotta be resilient. It's Love it. a good way to play the game. <laughs> Okay. So this, my last question for you, maybe this is an answer, but I want more, more answers. <laughs> um, what would you say is the most important thing for, for a woman to understand before they're starting their own businesses? Cause I said, I think there are a lot of women here who are listening because they are business owners and who may be interested in dabbling and thinking about it. We're, we're going to give them some advice from you. Well, what, what do they need to know? Amazing. So I definitely do think that would be, you know, the best piece of advice I can give someone is that like, it's okay. You know, it's okay. Nobody's like, 
you know, sometimes we think like what they're going to say, I didn't do this, like all that, like I say, like this negativity that just is so easy to, to like impact us and to work so hard on just saying like, there's another chance, like Mm. nothing, it's, it's not a closed door. It's just, it's, there's, you know, it's a different route. Um, And just, again, like what you said, if you're, if your eye is on the bigger picture, then the small like obstacles that you come across with shouldn't become mountains, like just get Mm -hmm. past it. You know, next week will be better. The next client will be better. You know, we all, we all have challenges and we all have, you know, those, those real struggles, whether in business or personally, and, and it's normal. It's just part of our growth, part of our journey. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. And is it, is it possible also for goals to shift throughout the course of like, as the bill, as the business is developing, and as you see what's working, what's not working, like, I guess, can you have, you can have a big goal and then you can have smaller goals. And, but like, if, if these start to shift, like, should people panic? <laughs> sure not. I think you have to shift. I think that the only way to actually grow properly is to understand that I need to be flexible. You know, I need to figure out, work with where I see the need needing to work, whether it's, at home, better help, whether it's a husband who's more on board, whether it's your business, a model has to change because of the needs of the industry, whatever it is. Um, definitely flexible is, you know, just like the resilience. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah, flexibility and resilience, I feel like are like very connected, <laughs> right? They really are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause I'd imagine in your field, like you've created a whole plan and you were ready to go where you started and you realize, Oh, I have to change. I have to erase. I have to delete. I have to restructure. redo. Sure. like, it's so hard. Like, Oh my gosh, this is what I, this is what I wanted. Like, I uh-huh. mean to like work 20 hours a day. I'm exhausted. Like, this is what I like now, what, you know, where does this take me? Like now, what, you know, and sometimes to think like, like, don't be so hard on yourself. Like, mm-hmm. yes, you're building something. It's not that you know, I, I, I go through this, I go through this also, you know, often, and there's someone I need to talk to just to like, figure out like, is this, you know, this is, this is not where I saw myself. Like I built this company so that I can be X, Y, Z, but now why am I not X, mm. Y, am I, you know, but wow. it's well, okay. That, you know? I think that's a very important point too. It's like, we have this idea of what does success mean? Like, right. what is success? And that's something that's going to be very individualized for everyone. Right. And then what, if, when you reach that point, as a system, everyone should reach the point of success where they feel satisfied and that they're using all their talents. But what happens when you reach the point of success and you're like, Ooh, right. Maybe this isn't exactly what I thought. We're never satisfied. It's a crazy thing to think like, (laughs) it's it's scary. You know, like I I'm at this point, what, what more do I want? Of course we always want more. It's like, no, why can't you just like appreciate the moment, you know, (laughs) appreciate where you're at. Um, but I think, determined women probably struggle with that. You know, I'm probably guilty. I'm sure a lot of people are guilty of the same thing. It's that we need the next, like we want to now reach the next bar. You know, we want to, right. I don't, I don't know if that's healthy. I'm being mm-hmm. right. I don't know. Um, it's how Hashem I'm, made you. I don't know if you're well, going to change. Well, it's, it's also <laughs> a picky avos, right? Like uh, he, there he, we go. He has 100 wants 200 right there. In the niche yeah. Market. And everything, you know, it's like <laughs> perfect children. Are they ever perfect? No, right. it doesn't, they're always, they're always could be more perfect. You know, right. there always can be a better shade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I like this shape a lot. I have to say this shape is pretty Like I'm, I'm hoping it's going to last so old. I'm hoping it's going to keep lasting. <laughs> I still like my shape though. My sister is Sari. It's oh like, really that's convenient oh we gotta have her on the we gotta have oh, her on the podcast amazing oh my gosh you must oh wow so, nice. so cool wow. okay good to know good to know well Kyla, this has been an absolute pleasure oh, this has nice. been such it's a, an enjoyable conversation and a very interesting and informative conversation and I know, I know our listeners are going to just be like this is great <laughs> Um, so thank you for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedule. Yes. My sure. pleasure. It was so nice to get to know you. Yeah. Thanks. I'm Likewise. You, like, lots of Hatzlacha, you know, continue yeah. Hatzlacha with JCN and with all your endeavors. I mean, thank you. You too. Thanks. You're doing great work. Thanks, thanks. Kyla. Well, that was an amazing conversation. Yeah. That was fantastic. I, I love how normal and relatable Kyla is, but also how completely driven and successful, um, she also is, you yeah. know, it's, it's such a nice combination. And I, I don't know, two, two pieces of advice that she gave that really resonated with me was the idea of like, grow slowly. It's mm-hmm. okay. I think that this is also something that I encourage, like when people are becoming from, or they're like just working on their own avodas Hashem, like you have to take small steps. I think this is the claw around, across like everything. If you're working on your meetups, but uh, anything you have to take small steps. You can't rush to the finish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You have to build it, you know, well, you have to build that foundation good. And also it's okay. Don't worry about what people say. 
<laughs> that I need to like remind myself of that on the regular. Mm. Like that's nice. Like don't worry about what people say. It's okay. Mm. Do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there were a number of points that she brought up that don't just apply to business. They're just life lessons, like you shared. Um, and I also really appreciate like her vulnerability, you know, like, as I said, you know, I follow her on LinkedIn. I see the work that she's doing it. It's incredible. Um, you know, she, she's, she's, she's powerful. I mean, she's doing a lot of very important work, um, and is very busy and running this huge successful company. And yeah, that can be intimidating. And what I love about the interview today and, you know, sharing with our listeners is like, these are real people (laughs) who started, from the beginning yes. and who built themselves up and they're kind. And what she kept on saying is like the most important thing is just, you know, being reliable and treating your customers right. Yes. And, you know, she's li- living the dream and it's great, but she's also telling us that there are ups and they're downs and their moods and you get through it. And that means just so much to me. A hundred percent. I love that. You, yeah, that's an excellent insight. Starting and developing a business requires grit, stamina, and risk-taking. Even if you don't own a business, is there something that you can learn from entrepreneurs to bring into your own life and work? Are there ways we can push ourselves out of our comfort zone more or be more grittier to achieve our goals? Thanks so much for joining us today on this episode of DMC. We really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, we would so appreciate if you would take a moment to rate and review Deep Meaningful Conversations wherever you get your podcasts. Also, watch us on YouTube and you can leave a comment there. We, we, all, we read all of them, so please do. It's true, we do. <laughs> <laughs> if you have feedback to share, you can email us at dmc at meaningfulminute.org. I read the emails. I love them. I forward them to Alex. Oh, yeah. um, finally, thank you to the crew at Meaningful Minute for everything they do to make DMC happen. See you next episode.